Okay, so first of all, uh, welcome. Welcome to Manufacturing Engineering One. I hope that um, the exam period did uh, go well for all of you. And um, obviously, we hope that uh, you are uh, extremely motivated to start the second semester and to take these units on Manufacturing Engineering One. Obviously, um, these were not the circumstances that we've all uh, planned to meet with you. Uh, but unfortunately, due to these COVID-related restrictions, we'll have to deliver these units uh, online. Also, we've had to make some changes in terms of how we deliver the lectures, but also how we assess uh, the contents of the units, and we'll go through that during the day's lecture. Uh, but nonetheless, I'd like to reassure you that uh, myself, Mike, um, and all the GTAs involved in this unit will do our best to make this uh, worthwhile experience for you and that at the end of the day, you enjoy um, this uh, unit that is delivered uh, together to uh, both Mac and Aerospace. So um, today, um, I saw that some, you had some questions on the, um, on the chat. So this is a unit that is delivered to Mac and Aero. So this is just an introduction. You don't have to take notes if you don't want to. Uh, the recording of the session, uh, of today's session will be uploaded uh, immediately after we finish the, the lecture and it will be available on Blackboard. So you don't need to take any notes uh, if you don't want to. So uh, the outline for today's lecture, um, I'm just gonna give you a bit, uh, a bit of background in terms of um, uh, my research. Then we'll go into the unit structure, the aims um, and uh, the syllabus for, for this unit. Also how we've uh, scheduled the delivery of the different content that we have uh, in Manufacturing Engineering 1, and uh, importantly, how the unit is going to be uh, assessed as well. We'll have the chance as well to uh, introduce you to some of the staff involved in the delivery of the unit, and then we'll briefly talk about uh, some definitions and purpose of Manufacturing Engineering 1, and some main differences between what we normally called advanced manufacturing and more conventional manufacturing techniques such as uh, CNC uh, machining. So uh, I know that some of you already know me. My name is uh, Mark Mingus. I have um, a degree in mechanical engineering um, that I took in the Polytechnic Institute of Leria in Portugal. And it was during these uh, undergraduate studies that I first became in contact with uh, additive manufacturing. These were actually very early days for these technologies and uh, it caught my eye, so I became really interested in terms of the use of additive manufacturing for the development, rapid development of products. So I've decided to take a PhD at the University uh, of Girona in Spain, uh, where I've developed um, an additive manufacturing system uh, to produce uh, tissue engineering implants. So basically implants that we can use to regenerate parts of the human body. Um, after a few experiences that I had in the industry, as a project engineer um, in, a, in a natural gas company, as well as a, as a scientific consultant in a medical company. I've joined the University of Manchester in, back in 2014, where I've established a research group in biofabrication for healthcare. And for those of you who are not very familiar with uh, biofabrication and um, tissue engineering, uh, this is basically um, the application or the combined application of uh, medical imaging with additive manufacturing technologies to create functional implants to uh, regenerate parts of the human body that are damaged either by trauma or by disease. And we use this in different tissues and for different purposes. So currently I'm a principal investigator at the Emory Royce Institute for Advanced Materials. And my research group, um, works on three areas uh, or three main areas of research. One is bone tissue regeneration. So trying to create with additive manufacturing um, bone substitutes that can replace the function of fractured bones. And also uh, we developed models to study disease. Um, in particular, we focus on neurovascular disease like dementia and Alzheimer, trying to understand the mechanisms that and allow for the development of the disease and as a consequence, 
how can we better treat patients that suffer from this kind of diseases? And also in terms of cancer, this is an example of breast cancer that affects both men and women, but we also develop models, humanized models of other tissues such as, as prostate cancer and chronic wounds. And um, this is just to show you how relevant engineers are uh, also in terms of healthcare. And in particular, how advanced manufacturing technologies can be critical to create either implants that can replace um, damaged uh, body parts or as in vitro models to study disease and develop new therapies. So this is a bit of my uh, uh, research, a bit of my uh, background. Um, and now I would like to talk uh, more in detail about this unit, this manufacturing engineering unit. So um, as you all know, manufacturing engineering companies are uh, vital in terms of our modern economy, mainly due to their capability to generate high economic value uh, products, uh, but not just products, also jobs. Um, and the role of a uh, manufacturing engineer is uh, quite important and requires advanced skills in order to analyze and also improve complex integrated uh, manufacturing systems. So in terms of the units, we have two main aims. One is obviously to provide you with an adequate set of skills so that you are able to design a product, select the most adequate manufacturing technologies, either added manufacturing, casting, forming, welding, to be able to transform some of the raw products like polymers and metals into uh, something that can be tradable based on uh, different aspects, both economic, uh, but also functional and uh, sustainable. Uh, in particular, we're gonna focus in terms of the manufacturing technologies, we're gonna focus on trying to develop your skills and understanding in terms of additive manufacturing. Uh, and here we're gonna cover a wide range of techniques from extrusion uh, principles to sterolithography and laser sintering, but also more conventional systems such as uh, metal casting and injection molding, and then uh, also uh, forming and welding uh, technologies. The other uh, and also important aim is for you to be able to, as a manufacturing engineer, to define the organization and also the layout of the machines within a factory. Uh, and according also to the quantity of the products they have to produce, or that have to be manufactured. And obviously, according to uh, the philosophy of the company and the markets that the company is um, trying to target. So these are the two main aims of uh, this unit. The way that it's structured and in terms of the syllabus, we will start with additive manufacturing and we're gonna be covering over the next uh, six lectures, some of the most important principles and applications of additive manufacturing. Uh, we're going to look at specific advantages and limitations of each of these manufacturing processes. Like I said before, extrusion-based systems, vet photopolymerization, powder bed fusion, binder jetting. And finally, uh, but also very important, how can we estimate the costs involved in the manufacturing of products using additive manufacturing? We will then uh, look into more conventional uh, manufacturing systems such as casting. And uh, we're gonna be looking in detail in terms of the fundamentals of this process and the equipment that is uh, necessary to design and to transform these uh, metals into uh, products that can be tradable. Then, um, we're going to revisit some of the material that you've covered, uh, I believe in materials one, in terms of uh, poly polymeric materials, the classification of the polymers, mainly uh, thermoplastics and thermoset materials, some of the main applications, and then how can we transform those polymers into uh, products using uh, injection molding? Then uh, towards the end, uh, Professor Mike Smith, um, we'll be talking to you about metal uh, forming processes, the study of metal extrusion and deep drawing, some of the applications of these processes in the industry, uh, the equipment needed, characteristics, forces, process defects, 
uh, and some simple calculations involving metal forming. And then finally, uh, Professor Mike Smith will also, will also be talking to you about welding processes and some principles and applications. So in terms of the timetable, uh, between week 21 and 23, we will be talking about additive manufacturing. This will be delivered by uh, me. Week 24 and 26 will be dedicated to casting processes. Week 26, 27 and 30 will be dedicated to polymer processing. And then Professor Mike Smith will take over and talk to you about forming processes in week 30 and 32. And then finally, in week 33 and 34, he will be covering all uh, the welding material. A part of these uh, 24 hours of lectures, you'll also have uh, three tutorials. The first one is gonna be on week uh, 25, and then uh, on week 27 and 33, you'll have tutorial two and tutorial three uh, respectively. So in these tutorials, the first one will be mainly about additive manufacturing processes and some casting. And then the second will be uh, mainly about casting processes. And then finally, uh, the last will be covering the remaining uh, processes like forming and welding. Unfortunately, this year, and because of the, because of the pandemic, we don't have access um, to uh, the 3D printing lab. So we'd have, we had to remove the lab on additive manufacturing that would normally deliver. But we still uh, wanted to give you some uh, experience in terms of additive manufacturing. So you'll have access to some uh, videos on how to design parts for additive manufacturing. How can you set up the, the, the printing of the parts, uh, some of the post-processing and some problems that you can encounter when printing. And also to complement this, there will be some surgery sessions um, with Chris Eaton, which is, uh, is the, the experimental officer in charge of the 3D printing lab, where you're gonna have the chance to actually talk to him about the contents of the video and any other questions that you have related to uh, editing manufacturing. So in terms of study hours, um, as I've said, on top of the 24 hours of lectures and the three hours of tutorials, we also expect you uh, to invest at least 73 hours of independent study uh, to successfully complete this uh, unit. In terms of the, the literature, um, we're gonna be uh, following this handbook of manufacturing engineering and technology. Uh, this is the core textbook and it's available on the reading list and it's free for you to access online uh, through the, the reading list on the Blackboard page. We also have another recommended textbook, uh, but this is not available online, at least for the time being. So please do access and use the core textbook that is available on uh, Blackboard. So I've already introduced myself. Um, the other lecturer in this unit is Professor Mike Smith, and um, he will be talking to you about uh, forming and welding, and I would probably ask now Professor Mike Smith to to unmute myself and introduce yes. myself. Yes, so I'm Mike Smith. Um, I'm a little bit older than Marco. You can tell that because my hair is grey. Um, and I'm the Professor of Welding Technology here um, in MACE. But I spent most of my career working on structural integrity of nuclear power plants. Uh, uh, with interest in how the manufacturing process results in troubles later down the line when your components don't perform as advertised. Um, so you'll see a little bit of this in the lectures on welding. Um, uh, the forming lectures are much more to, do, uh, well, partly to do with how you make them and also partly to do with what can go wrong, because it's always worth understanding what can go wrong with your process. Um, so you won't really see me again, except possibly at the odd tutorial session um, until uh, I think after Easter, when we start the forming and welding lectures. Um, 
there'll be a similar format to this, although I'm not sure that I'll be as brave as Marco to deliver them live. What we may use is a, a mixture of pre-recorded videos and discussion sessions, but we'll see how this first section goes. So, so that's me, and I will see you all again virtually at some point. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. Besides myself and Professor Mike Smith, we'll also have uh, the support of uh, some GTAs. Um, Dr. Anastasia Vasilius, Thomas Flint, Angela, uh, Marie Louisa, uh, Maxwell, uh, Evangelos, Alexander, Olivia, and Joel. They will be helping out with the delivery of the units. And you'll be seeing them also during the tutorial sessions that they will uh, deliver to you. So. Please feel free to uh, ask them any questions they have during those sessions. And um, if there is anything additional that you want to inquire about, again, please feel free to contact us uh, using uh, the communication channels that will talk to you um, in the next uh, slide. So um, obviously you can always uh, email us if you've got any particular questions that you want to, to ask us. Uh, you can also, during the live sessions, you can uh, post your questions on the chat and we'll try to answer those. The ones that we're not able to answer, obviously, uh, we will post them on the discussion board and we'll try to answer them uh, after the session. Uh, but ideally, uh, you should be able to uh, post any questions you have on the discussion board. This is organized in a very simple way. Uh, so it's divided by topics. Uh, the first one, additive manufacturing, metal casting, polymer processing, uh, forming, welding, and then some general inquiries. So if you've got any question uh, that arise either from the synchronous sessions or the asynchronous sessions that we have, or from the tutorials, if the question is related to additive manufacturing, please click on the forum of additive manufacturing and post your question. This will uh, be monitored in a regular basis and we'll try to answer all of your questions as quick as possible. Okay, so in terms of assessments, um, this again is slightly different from previous years, mainly because we uh, don't have uh, the 3D printing lab anymore because of the restrictions. So the unit is going to be assessed based on an exam that will account for 80% of your mark. Obviously, the final format of uh, this exam is still not confirmed, but you will be informed about it uh, in due time. And also, you'll have two uh, online quizzes. So these are normally multiple choice questions, and uh, they will cover all of the material uh, that is going to be delivered uh, during Manufacturing Engineering 1. It's mostly uh, theoretical principles that are going to be assessed in these multiple choice questions, but there might, there might be also some uh, numerical uh, questions that we may include in these uh, multiple choice quizzes. So these will be online and each quiz will account for 10% of your uh, final mark. Okay, so this is how the unit is structured, the aims, the objectives, the assessment and the staff involved. And now I'd like to go a bit more into some of the definitions and purpose of um, manufacturing engineering. So how can we actually define manufacturing engineering? And probably one of the most accepted definitions is um, the design, development, the implementation, the operation maintenance, and the control of all the processes that are involved in the manufacturing of uh, a product. And within this context, uh, a product um, is also defined as an item that has a value added to it during the production process. So the value is added to the, the, to, to, to the product based on the manufacturing systems that are used to transform uh, raw material into a tradable uh, product. And this, as we've said before, can be uh, this, this value can be added 
by uh, different manufacturing systems. Um, can be forming, can be additive manufacturing, can be joining, can be assembly. So these are just the general definition um, that is widely accepted by uh, most of the scientific community. But let me just take a step back and talk a bit about the history of manufacturing engineering. The, the word um, manufacture probably has appeared for the first time in English around the 16th century. And it's actually derived from the Latin manus uh, factus, which means uh, made by hand. The word manufacturing appeared uh, later on in the 17th century. And uh, the word production, uh, which often is used interchangeably with the word manufacturing, appeared around uh, the 15th century. But the manufacturing um, of objects uh, is actually uh, much, much older than that. In fact, as you can see in this slide, uh, manufacturing can be dated back to the period between 5000 and 4000 uh, BC, where we actually found the first drawings as well as markings on um, uh, different caverns around the world. So this uh, is a rock panel uh, in Cargo Oasis in Egypt. And these are the famous Lascaux two cave uh, paintings in France. There are many more examples uh, such as these ones, but this is just to give an idea that actually the manufacturing didn't appear just with the production of objects that we use in our daily lives. This is actually a very good example of how our ancestors used tools to create drawings in canvas that can be uh, considered as a manufacturing process. The, the actual manufacture of items um, for specific uses uh, began um, with the production of uh, various household uh, artifacts. Um, and, and back in that time, they were made basically of, of wood, stone, and, and later on with uh, metal. The, the materials that were first used in making uh, utensils and uh, ornamental objects included gold because it was uh, a material that was readily, uh, readily available. And then uh, copper and iron uh, followed later on by uh, silver, lead, tin, and other uh, metals. Obviously, the processing methods uh, that were firstly employed to transform these materials into um, ornamental objects, um, they actually were quite, quite simple. And they were basically casting processes or hammering. And because simply they were very easy to, to use and to perform. And these two examples I have here are two examples of uh, objects that were manufactured using hammering or uh, casting. So this is a, a bronze axe that dates back to 2000, the period between 2000 and 500 BC. And uh, this is a 15th century uh, iron uh, cannon that was uh, casted. So uh, even though uh, metal casting, for example, dates back to the 15th century uh, or even later, uh, it's still used nowadays uh, to manufacture some of the most uh, important pro products that we have, for example, in the automotive or uh, aerospace industry, as you will see in the next coming lectures. Also, uh, importantly, manufacturing engineering can be um, divided into different areas, um, which we call normally functional areas. And there are four uh, functional areas. So the first one is uh, the planning. So this is the actual first engineering stage towards the establishment of a manufacturing system for the production of, um, of a tradable product. It obviously includes different things like the selection and specification of the facilities that are required to produce that product, the equipment, the manufacturing technologies, the tools, but also the plant layouts to provide uh, the most efficient and smooth operation. The second one is the manufacturing uh, operations. So products must be produced uh, efficiently and at viable costs for the companies. Uh, without, uh, and this is quite important, without compromising the quality standards. This obviously requires uh, meticulous work to ensure that uh, the appropriate routine functioning of the, the, of the plant, of the facilities, uh, 
and includes uh, also different things like the improvements of the current layout of the machines in the floor, um, the procedure that you have in place, for example, to inspection uh, the products, the tools, uh, either the manufacturing or the control or the maintenance of those tools, and uh, the product plans and uh, associated specifications of those products. The third uh, functional area is uh, what is normally called manufacturing research. And this is actually quite, quite important for uh, companies to actually be competitive nowadays. So the continuous search for uh, innovative, uh, in innovative products um, and obviously more sustainable processes requires companies nowadays to actually have very good uh, research and development uh, departments. This provides them with uh, better materials, but also uh, methods or methodologies, um, tools, techniques, and, and procedures to improve the manufacturing processes and reduce the costs of production of those uh, products. It includes, for example, the creation of concepts, um, so conceptual designs and manufacturing of prototypes, and uh, some innovative uses of existing items. So research is actually nowadays the basis for innovation in terms of um, companies. And finally, the manufacturing uh, control. And this is to ensure um, compliance with required schedules companies uh, must have in order to uh, have appropriate places, uh, processes in place to manufacture uh, or actually to manage the manufacturing operations. It includes, for example, uh, the coordination of all manufacturing departments, like um, the, the purchase of materials, the purchase of tools. Um, and this is actually uh, very important to ensure that the production of a product is smooth, sustainable, and economically uh, viable. So these are just four uh, important functional areas. I'm not expecting you to know all this by heart, but it's important they have an idea about this, uh, about the existence of these functional areas, how they are divided, and what uh, they normally comprise. So there are, as we've seen along the history, there have been uh, uh, several important developments, but probably one of the most uh, important milestones in terms of manufacturing engineering was the development of what is nowadays called the computer integrated manufacturing uh, methodologies. So what is exactly this uh, computer integrated manufacturing? So this encompasses all hardware, so both hardware and software, required for computed added design, computed added modeling, and computed added engineering. And these are all integrated and they are used from the initial product uh, concept. So when you come up with an idea with a concept and throughout the production and distribution uh, of the products into the marketplace. And one key element in terms of um, computer integrated manufacturing uh, is computer numerical control or more commonly known as CNC. This was first implemented in the 50s and is basically a method of controlling the movements of a machine components by uh, directly inserting uh, coded instructions in the form of numerical data. So as you can see here in this figure, uh, CNC is basically a code, a numerical code that provide instructions to either the cutting tool or the printing head to move within the building platform and in this way control uh, the manufacturing of the product according to the design specifications. So in terms of manufacturing engineering, I think we can uh, divide uh, the technologies or the different technologies into uh, two big areas. One is what we normally call conventional manufacturing. And these comprise mainly subtractive manufacturing processes. And what is now also now uh, commonly known as advanced manufacturing or additive manufacturing technologies. And although they share uh, the same DNA, so they basically 
uh, rely on computer integrated manufacturing, there are some significant differences between them. And as we can see in these two uh, figures, in terms of subtractive manufacturing, and as indicated by uh, the name of these technologies, we normally start with the block of material, and then we use tools to remove material layer by layer until we obtain our final products. In a completely different way, additive manufacturing, what we do is we add material layer upon layer until we obtain a three-dimensional physical object. So it's basically subtracting material in conventional manufacturing against adding material in uh, more advanced manufacturing. And the ability to add material one layer on top of the other brings several advantages, as we will see when we start talking about additive manufacturing a bit more in detail. And mainly, or probably the biggest advantage is the geometrical freedom that you have uh, in terms of uh, products, which very often it's quite difficult to achieve with subtractive manufacturing uh, processes. But there are also uh, other differences that are important to mention. And one of them is in terms of materials. So additive manufacturing technology was mainly developed around uh, polymeric materials or plastic materials, uh, also some waxes and paper laminates. But the success um, that actually led to the adoption of these technologies by the industry was actually the ability to process composite materials and more recently metal materials for the construction of parts for the automotive and uh, for the aerospace industry. There is the, an important thing that we need to bear in mind in terms of additive manufacturing is that because of the way that we add layers uh, one on top of the other, very often we have voids and uh, it's also possible to have some anisotropy um, and this is a function of um, the orientation of the parts in the building platform, but also the process parameters uh, or how the design was inputted by the operator into the machine. Uh, instead, in terms of CNC machining, uh, this is mainly used for uh, brittle uh, and um, brittle materials, uh, mainly for, for metals, although it can also be used uh, to machine some, some polymers. And uh, importantly, uh, in the case of CNC machining, uh, we don't find the same anisotropy as we normally find in additive manufacturing. So the properties of the parts that are manufactured with CNC machining are much more homogeneous and predictable in terms of their quality as well. Also, uh, the accuracy is quite different between these two uh, manufacturing uh, systems. Uh, but before we talk about accuracy, it's, I think it's important to uh, make some, um, or to clarify some of the concepts uh, because they are normally used interchangeably also in a wrong way. So accuracy describes how closely a manufacturing machine um, or the output of this manufacturing uh, machine conforms to a tolerance within a specified uh, dimensional range. Repeatability is also uh, quite often used, is different from accuracy and basically captures the ability of the equipment to produce in a consistent way, a specific output time after time. And the resolution uh, refers normally to the smallest uh, measurement of feature that the machine can reproduce. So, these are uh, similar concepts, but uh, at the same time, quite different uh, between them. So in general, additive manufacturing uh, is not as accurate as CNC machining. And this has also to do with the stage of development. Obviously, uh, CNC machining has been around for many more years than additive manufacturing. And the, it allows you to produce parts with a much, much higher resolution. Uh, uh, it's also important to say that independently of uh, additive manufacturing or CNC machining, the accuracy of a part is always dependent on the machine that you use, that you select. So normally, high-end machines have a much higher 
uh, accuracy and resolution when compared to low-end machines. But it's also, uh, there are also some significant differences in terms of the skilled labor. So for example, determining uh, the program sequence uh, for a CNC machine can be uh, quite, quite difficult. And this includes, for example, uh, the selection of the tool to produce the, the parts, uh, set up the speed of the machine, the approach position, the angle. So all of this information that will be set up into the CNC machine needs to be determined by uh, the operator. And although additive manufacturing also requires uh, the definition or the setup of specific process parameters, these are normally much simpler and also uh, the, the smaller in terms of the number of, of process parameters that we need to set up. And this doesn't mean that, uh, for example, a technician that works with additive manufacturing technologies that is less paid when compared to a CNC uh, technician. But in reality, the number of operations and the complexity of those operations in terms of additive manufacturing is much lower when compared to CNC uh, machining. So this is an important distinction that um, it's important also to uh, bear in mind. So CNC machining, because of the number of operations that the technician needs to perform to obtain a 3D product, a three-dimensional product is much higher and much more complex when compared to additive uh, manufacturing. So very briefly, so these are just some of the concepts associated with conventional and more advanced manufacturing. And I would like just before uh, we finish the lecture for today to leave you with um, a simple question. So imagine that you are a manufacturing engineer in a company and that uh, you are uh, requested to uh, manufacturing uh, this cup. If you only take uh, design considerations into account, which product or which process would you choose to produce this cup? Would you select an additive manufacturing process knowing that the part would be produced layer upon layer, or would you select a subtractive process like CNC machining? Are there any design constraints that can limit uh, the choice of one process? Or um, for example, uh, do you think that are there any curvatures in these parts that could not be uh, achieved with CNC machining? So think about that and uh, we'll come back to this during our next uh, live session on uh, Tuesday. Again, uh, if you've got any questions, we'll try to answer them uh, in this chat and some of them that we're not able to answer, we'll try to do that in the discussion board. So thank you very much for uh, coming today and I will see you on uh, Tuesday.